the Mona Lisa, the most famous painting in the world. <laughs> It is a masterpiece by Leonardo da Vinci in 1503, commissioned by a nobleman and wealthy silk merchant, Francesco del Giocondo. The subject is del Giocondo's wife, Lisa Gherardini, and as a matter of fact, the original name of the painting in Italian is Gioconda, standing for del Giocondo's wife, Lisa del Giocondo. The name by which the painting is best known is Mona Lisa and comes from Giorgio Vasari, another painter of the same age, in ancient Italian, the word Mona was a short form for Madonna, which comes from the Latin word mea domina, similar to ma'am or my lady in English. The painting is also the most replicated and reinterpreted, even during Leonardo's lifetime, by his own students and contemporaries. There are a few replicas of the Mona Lisa around the globe. The Gioconda Torlonia, a 16th century replica owned by Torlonia family, is now exposed at Palazzo Montesitorio, lower house of the Italian parliament. The Isleworth Mona Lisa, it was painted at the same time of the original, and maybe by Leonardo himself. It has been asserted that Leonardo, almost invariably, commenced two versions of each of his works, which he rarely finished. Nowadays, the painting is owned by a group of Swiss-based investors, and it is part of a private collection in Geneva. The Prado Mona Lisa is a painting by the workshop of Leonardo da Vinci, and has been part of the collection of the Museo del Prado in Madrid, Spain, since 1819. The Hermitage Mona Lisa, painted by unknown artist in the mid-16th century, is located in Hermitage Museum of St. Petersburg. For over 400 years, the painting wasn't so popular. At the early of the 20th century, it wasn't even the most valued painting of the Louvre. Until the 1911... The team from National Research Council of Canada had the chance to analyze the painting with laser and infrared scanner technology, making a three-dimensional digitalization in order to see the possible difference in the height around the surface. A painting is generally made of very thin layers of paint, but the human eye can see just the last one. Scans turned up evidence of a fine and transparent veil around Mona Lisa's shoulders called Guarnello a characteristic dress of the Italian Renaissance wore by pregnant ladies or recently mothers. It should look similar to the veil wore by Sandro Botticelli's portrait of a lady. Therefore, it is thought that Francesco del Giocondo has commissioned the painting to Da Vinci to celebrate the new coming baby, and according to records found in Florence, Lisa del Gioconda gave birth late in 1503 when the painting was begun. In 2004, a Parisian engineer, Pascal Cot, has solved this mystery. Using a 240 megapixel multispectral imaging camera, he was able to see what is behind the painting, and he discovered a single brush stroke in the eyebrow region. This magical camera was invented by Cot himself and is owned by his company Lumiere Technology. It uses 13 wavelengths from ultraviolet light to infrared and the result is an image which has peeled away centuries of varnish and other alterations. Using this technique called LAM, layer amplification method, the painting originally included both brows and lashes that nowadays are not visible because obliterated by long ago restoration efforts. But there are other characteristics that da Vinci decided to change. The position of two fingers on the left hand, the smile was more expressive, her face wider than the actual Mona Lisa, and a series of rows of dots around the head that seems to suggest an elaborate headdress typically shown on the heads of saints or madonnas. That headdress appears to have been deliberately removed by the artist. Cotta said, I am an engineer and scientist, so for me all has to be logical. It was not logical that Mona Lisa does not have any eyebrows or eyelashes. But there is more. 
a secret remained hidden for 500 years. Further analysis discovered the existence of another painting under the well-known Mona Lisa. Using the lamb technique, Cott was able to isolating every single layer of paint, reconstructing the entire chronological history of the painting, from the creation to the last restoration. He said, we can now analyze exactly what is happening inside the layers of the paint, and we can peel like an onion all the layers of the painting. Who is hiding behind the painting? Who is the true Mona Lisa? Da Vinci is believed to have worked on the painting between 1503 and 1517, starting it in Florence, commissioned by a silk merchant for her wife, Lisa Gerardini. Or at least that's been the official belief for centuries. Cott has claimed the underneath layers portray Elisa with different physical traits. As we said earlier, the eyebrows, the smile, the wider face, and even the position of the eyes. Then the original subject could not be Lady Gerardini. As a matter of fact, Leonardo never sold the portrait to the silk merchant, Francesco del Giocondo, but he left the Italy after losing protection of Giuliano de' Medici, accepting the invitation of the King of France, Francis I, taking with himself the Mona Lisa. At this point, is it possible that da Vinci changed the subject after moving to France? No one can tell. In the end, Pascal Cote said, When I finished the reconstruction of Lisa Gerardini, I was in front of the portrait, and she is totally different to Mona Lisa today. This is not the same woman. Although the Louvre Museum declined to comment on the findings, saying it was not a part of the scientific team that studied the painting. Da Vinci chose to paint the Mona Lisa on a wood panel instead of canvas, because in 16th century Europe it was popular trend, using poplar wood, as were many other contemporary works in Renaissance. Until the early 1900s, the Mona Lisa was by no means the most famous painting in the world, but fairly well known only to art connoisseurs. At the time, the Lady with an Ermine was considered da Vinci's most famous painting, even though The Last Supper was the Leonardo's most celebrated works but it was a mural painting. Suddenly, the painting disappeared on August 21st, 1911. The thief was an Italian guy, Vincenzo Perugia, a former museum employee who was driven by a patriotic spirit, decided he wanted to bring the Mona Lisa back to Italy, convinced that the painting had been stolen by Napoleon. The painting disappeared for two years, increasing its popularity worldwide, until Perugia was arrested in Florence, trying to sell the painting to the Uffizi Gallery, one of the most important museum in Italy. Let me know if you are interested to know more about this story.